Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasul. Today, uh, uh, this is a, um, an uh, example or application of uh, uh, knowing how important is the, uh, st the uh, frequency domain analysis, how important is the frequency domain analysis for mechanical engineers. Today, we will see an example of uh, vibration in uh, rotating mechanical systems. This is an area uh, you could be familiar if you work in the field of vibration in, uh, in the oil industry or uh, petrochemical industry where are there, there are a lot of uh, rotating equipment and you are concerned about the, uh, uh, the vibrations in the uh, rotor bearing system. Okay. All right. Now, this is a rotor bearing system. A simple rotor bearing system. This is the mass of the rotor. These are uh, supported on two bearings through a rotor shaft. Okay, all right. Now, when we simplify the model into mass spring and damper system, this is the uh, mass of the system. We can assume this is the mass of the system. All right, and the bearings can act as a uh, damper and uh, and stiffness. Okay, damper and spring or damper and stiffness. Okay, one in the horizontal side and one in the uh, vertical side. Okay, so this is the simple model. Now, this is the simple model. Where is the forcing function in the rotating mechanical system? The forcing function is coming from the imbalance. The forcing function is coming from the imbalance. What is the imbalance? The imbalance is the result of the center of gravity when the center of gravity is away from the uh, from the uh, center of the area of the disk for example if it's away now when the rotor rotates okay or when the disk rotates this uh, 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 center of gravity okay will act as a centrifugal force what is a centrifugal force if you remember from physics okay when you have an object and this object is connected to the center and it's rotating, okay? There will be two forces, right? One force outward of the center, we call it centrifugal force, and one force equal will be, we call it a centripetal force. This centrifugal force, we call it the imbalance force in our uh, rotating system, okay? How much this uh, uh, centrifugal force or imbalance force? It's equal to the mass, the eccentricity, sorry, or sorry, the center of gravity, we call it imbalance, simply imbalance. When you multiply it by the eccentricity, this is distance between the uh, center of gravity and the center of the area, we call it uh, eccentricity or eccentricity. When you multiply it by this mass, small mass, we call it imbalance mass, okay? We call it the imbalance, simply we call it imbalance, okay? If you multiply it by the speed of the rotor squared, this will give you the force, the centrifugal force, okay? This will give you the centrifugal force. So let me show you here. This is the centrifugal force, okay? This is the force. It's a force in Newton. If you mold, if at a fixed speed, this can be calculated as the magnitude of the force, okay? So this is the equation of motion in the x direction, and this is the other equation of motion in the y direction, okay? All right. So this is an example how to calculate it, how they do in the field how they calculate the imbalance force. Okay, for example, you tell me how much imbalance you have, and at a fixed speed, you can calculate the uh, for the imbalance force. Okay, now we're gonna focus only in one direction. Why? Because the this direction would will be sim similar to the horizontal direction. Okay, they are symmetrical. So for simplicity, we're gonna focus only in one direction. All right, so we're gonna derive the equation of motion as we did from here. We're gonna bring it here, okay? So everything here at a fixed speed, this is gonna be constant, right? So this is like a force a force, or a magnitude of the force, okay? And at a fixed speed, okay, you can cal calculate how much your uh, forcing function, for example. Usually in rotor systems, okay, we are concerned about the steady state solution. Why? Because we are running at a fixed speed at a fixed speed. So we're gonna do the analysis again. We're gonna check the frequency response, how the system 
will behave as we change the input frequency, the running frequency from zero to infinity, what will happen to the magnitude at steady state? Okay, the vibrations. All right. So you can do this as we did last time. This is the input, this is my output. The input is the uh, uh, forcing function. The output is your uh, uh, displacement, Y. This is the output. And this is the input, the unbalanced force. So we are assuming here, like we have a, a rotating imbalance, okay? That will generate the uh, sinusoidal uh, input forcing function or harmonic input. So the steady state, as we did last time in the example, the steady state solution will look like the following. You need to find the amplitude and the phase. This one is give it depending on what is the input, all right? So you're gonna change the input from zero to infinity, just like we did in the analysis, in the frequency response analysis last time. So expect to see the same thing here. You will have the same, this is the, uh, you're gonna use the sinusoidal transfer function just like we did last time. So this is gonna be a constant you have to calculate. And this is the magnitude at each speed, all right? And this is the phase just like we did last time. So the analysis will be exactly the same. So if you draw the input, the input frequency versus the uh, magnitude, or you can divide all the constant, take it to the other side as he did here. What did he do here? He divided uh, the, uh, mag the uh, running frequency over the natural frequency. So you can compare it directly. So when you have one, that means what one? That means uh, the running frequency is equal to the uh, input frequency, uh, equal to the natural frequency of the system. Okay, and he took all the constant to the other side, multiplied by the amplitude. Same analysis. You see the curve will be the, exactly the same. So this is when you have no damping in the system. You see, it's gonna go to infinity. That's why we add the damper to the system. Okay, so you know how much this frequency, right? How much the frequency here? The frequency equal to how much do you expect? It's gonna be equal to omega d. Okay, see? Here it's equal to omega n, this one omega equal to omega n. Here, it's equal to omega d when, you, when we add a damper. And when you have a, a damping very high equal to the uh, critical damping, you can see there will be no uh, critical speed. It will be very smooth. Most of the cases we have uh, under damp systems like vibrations, okay? Because damping is expensive. We cannot add damping as much as you want, okay? It's expensive. So we expect to see the same analysis, the same frequency response. Also for the, uh, 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 for the uh, phase shift, will be the same phase shift, okay? So if you draw the phase shift with respect to the um, uh, running speed at the natural frequency, this is when omega equal to the natural frequency here, okay? You expect to see how much the, magnitude, the, uh, frequ the uh, phase angle will be. It will be minus 90, okay? At low speed, it will be zero phase angle. At high speed, it will be minus 180 degrees, okay, at high speed. Low speed, high speed, around the natural frequency, okay? The solid line is for a system without damper, okay? The dashed line is the system when we add a damper, like the our system, okay? So you can, for the phase angle, either you say minus 90 or minus 80, or you can say plus 90 lag, okay? You have to say lag, okay? So this is lagging. This is lag, okay, lagging. If you choose to choose positive, absolute value, you have to mention it's lagging, okay? Or you can use, just in most of the uh, uh, vibration engineers in the field, they just use the sign negative, that means it's lagging, without using the word lagging, okay? Usually you, they use this in theory, okay? In, uh, in the field, they usually do this, okay? So what does it mean, lagging? Okay, this is a good question for understanding. What does it mean? when you say a phase angle is lagging, okay? For example, at low speed, at low speed, at low running speed, what was the phase angle? It was zero, check. How much at low speed, how much the phase angle? Almost zero, okay? And at high speed, minus 180. And exactly at the natural frequency, minus 90. Let me write it here again. At the natural frequency, the phase is minus 90 degrees. At uh, high speed, the phase is minus 180 degrees. What does it mean? 
let's say this is my mass, okay? This is my uh, mass from the model, the simple model that I used here. This one, where is it? This one. This is the mass of the model. I'm assuming this is the unbalanced force rotating, okay? As you increase the speed of the rotor, okay? So what does it mean? Where is the mass here, the small mass, the unbalanced mass? What do you think? The phase is zero. This is the, uh, uh, this is the uh, uh, direction of the displacement y. So when I say phase is zero, that means the mass is in phase with the unbalanced mass m. So they are in phase, you can see that? They are in, in the same direction. What does it mean? That means the more, uh, when, the, uh, when the mass, the large mass going up, the small mass will go in the same direction. That's why you get the amplitude here. The amplitude at small, at small speed, it will get higher and higher and higher. Why? Because both the unbalanced mass and the uh, mass of the disk moving in the same direction that means they are encouraging each other to move to move more in the same direction okay all right for high for uh, for uh, when the running speed is equal to the natural frequency what does it mean the phase is minus 90 what does it mean minus 90 this is my mass where is what where do you think the unbalance it will be somewhere here This is my small mass. Why? Because this is lagging minus 90 degrees. What does it mean? That means the large mass will try to go in the y direction and the small mass will try to go perpendicular. Okay? Which will cause a rotation or whirling motion, we call it. And this is dangerous. This is what causes the highest vibrations here that we don't want to see. This is the peak or the resonance. Okay? This area is not good area to work on or to run your machine on. Why? Because it's going to run on a very uh, high amplitude, okay, where the phase angle is minus 90 perpendicular, which will cause a whirling motion, okay? So it will cause a whirling motion, okay? Like, uh, like a, um, uh, I will show you in the next slide, okay? Now, for the high speed, when the running speed is very high, higher than the natural frequency, where is the imbalance? It will be opposite in the opposite direction here okay all the way down okay all the way down minus 180 degrees so what does that mean that means the large mass trying to go up and the imbalance this is the imbalance trying to go down so they work against each other what does it mean uh, working against each other as the mass trying to go up the small mass will try to pull it down is this good or, or bad Look at the amplitude. Is it good or bad? It's good. Why? Because this will reduce the amplitude of Y. In other words, it will reduce the vibration. Okay. So this is the best area. Okay. That you want to design your uh, Omega, the running speed. When you want to design your uh, pump, for example, the speed of the pump. You want to design the speed of the pump at high speed, higher than this area, right? We we're going to talk. We're going to talk about this in the example of uh, vibration isolation. Why? Because this is the smallest vibration you expect to get. To get. Okay. All right. This is uh, the uh, big picture you can see here. This is the center of the area when it's not rotating. When the when the disc is not rotating. Okay. As the disc rotates, okay, you expect to see amplitude. This is the amplitude of the disc. And this is the phase angle. Okay, you can see this. This is the phase angle. So the phase will change from 0 to minus uh, 180 degrees. At low speed, they will move in phase. At uh, a speed around uh, the uh, natural frequency, this will be perpendicular. That's what, what will cause the uh, whirling motion. You see, this is the whirling motion. Whirling motion means it will uh, the, the rotor will rotate around the center of the uh, area when the uh, disc is not uh, rotating. This is bad. This is not good. You will always want to, the center to be next, uh, close to the, uh, to the center uh, of the uh, coordination here, right? 
when you run at a high speed, what will happen to this mass at high speed? It will go here, right? At high speed, minus 180, okay? And this will, it will push the mass toward the center here, and this is good, all right? So this is the, the big picture, okay? Uh, the fundamentals of the vibrations in uh, a rotating shaft. What we're gonna do next, inshallah, we will see uh, more examples, uh, more applications, okay? Uh, in uh, chapter uh, uh, in chapter uh, uh, nine. Thank you very much.